Beers and Steinberg. You know what the fuck it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut cocaine. No political corrections. Always sleep. Fuck being a woke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this shit. Before you were sucking on your mama's tit. Airy Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Sexism. Much love to my loyal bitch bag holders. Rollers, clip loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. As they die by my sword. <laughs> you, but D, you just, you just talked about raping women. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then, but now you're saying let us pray? Exactly. <laughs> You know what I mean? Solomon had 17 wives. I know one of them said no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish. I don't understand. Is oh. this the Bible? Yes, I no, think, I'm just I think it is. The word, the word we, we, The Old Testament's the same, baby. Mm. Uh, we're, we're rocking and rolling? Whenever you're ready, you guys ready to start. All right. Hey, you might have recognized that uh, Nicaraguan voice. Uh, I think this might be his third official return to the PC, baby. Woo, woo, woo. Nary signs in the building. <sighs> Take it easy, people. Everybody calm down, please. You know what I mean? Ladies, control yourselves. Put your brassiers back on. Take your shirt. Put your shirt down, sir. <laughs> you need to see that. All right. And if you know, we we always, well, for me, I always circle it, circle it on the calendar when I say I'm coming to me. Mommy, Florida, baby. Mm. Here we are in Miami. Uh, it wasn't scheduled to be this way, but Nary popped in. To the green room Sunday night last show. Yeah. Uh, we got to chopping it up. And then we said, uh-oh, time to play some pickup ball. We got another man. Yeah. So comedy comrade, Nary Signs in the building. And we're going to talk what we like to talk a lot of times. Movies, man. Movies. Nary looks exactly like what I would look like if I didn't have a Jewish daddy. <laughs> you look exactly like I would look like if I had money. <laughs> if I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and dude, uh, you know, I don't know how many people, I mean, I'm sure everybody knows from your podcast and your, and your Twitter all and Instagram, them. All 12 of them. All 12 of them. Uh, your journey with the weight loss. You look good, brother. Thank you, man. You yeah, look good, man. man. You've really transformed. Yeah, man. Trying to, trying to get right is, with the Lord. Is it hard when you're on the cruise ship though? No, that's his easiest. It, like really? legitimately, like, I know this is like, I, I remember we were talking about this area where we were saying yeah. like, when I talk about shit that is important to me, I become less funny. Uh, so this is like one of those things where I'm about to get less funny but honest to God people ask me about that and I love talking about the weight loss only because I like inspiring people and be like yo trust me I've been fat for 40 years if I could if I could lose weight anybody could lose weight but the cruise ships is when I work when I perform on cruise ships is really the easiest because all the foods are already cooked for you you just gotta pick and choose the right ones but which is hard because it's a buffet isn't it yeah well there's more there's multiple there's dining rooms and stuff like that but my point is you could you don't have to I don't have to go out and shop for and cook healthy food somebody else already shopped for it somebody else already cooked it I just gotta pick it mm. so that's way easier than me when I come home now I gotta do my grocery shopping I gotta be responsible and not and not buy the Oreos and not you know what I mean so now I gotta yeah. do that and then I gotta go home and cook it and not just order eat, order a pizza and just so, so that's, that's easier what he's saying is Aries when he sees the pasta buffet yeah. yes. he walks by I literally walk by okay it. yeah okay yeah cause I know some people are pasta whores hi <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know uh, two movies that Andy and I uh looked at and, and for me it was the very last minute As a matter of fact I got here uh, off a of red eye I got here technically early Friday morning and after I did my television press I, I, I went to the movies and saw uh, Creed 3 mm. and on the plane I downloaded from iTunes Cocaine Bear Right. so we was going to talk Cocaine Bear and Creed 3 and then I asked you, uh, had you seen both? And you said you only saw Creed 3. I saw Creed 3. I, I, I didn't see, well, first of all, there were, uh, the original title of Cocaine Bear was Miami. And then, and then it was, it was <laughs> the original title was South Beach. And that's where all the cocaine bears are in South Beach. Uh, but they, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen There the was movie a cocaine yet. bear in here tonight. There was. Was it really? With yeah. that young guy that you kept making fun of. Oh, shit. Right, right, right. <laughs> I yeah. got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but I haven't seen it yet, but I, I actually literally bought it on iTunes. Just some same, same thing you're talking about. I literally bought right. it yesterday because I have a movie podcast called Movie Bros Pod. Uh, and we're going to review uh, in a couple of days. We're going to do 
we, we like to do one new movie and one old movie. So we will be reviewing on my podcast, Movie Bros. We're going to be reviewing Cocaine Bear and Scarface. Really? No. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So, so, you know, get the... get the. Well, here, here's what I'm thinking. Because, you know, I, I know that comics, you know, we, we have... If you're a good comic, you have there's a gut and an instinct and an intuition. And based off certain things, maybe you've either seen in a preview or you might just know. And if you really just sharp at what you do, you know, I think that you can chime in on a conversation and add to it. Because I usually when we see movies, I got a lot of notes, right. especially depending on how great the movie is, how intricate, how deep. But I told Andy, I was like, dude, between Cocaine Bear and Creed 3, I don't really have a lot of notes. But I know that because you've seen Creed 3, we've seen Creed 3, and we are just Rocky whores, yes. the whole Rocky. Yes. Yes. So I know we can go hard in the paint. But Cocaine Bear, I, I really don't have a lot on, and I, and I don't know how much Andy has, but I, I'm, I'm thinking, and since you're the guest, you let us know what you want to do. I know we could either go Rocky Creed 3 first, or we could do Cocaine Bear and let me and Andy do what we're going to do. And I know you quick enough to possibly chime in and give you two yeah, cents. Yeah, 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 do that. Let's so do that. Are, Let's you, you want to yeah, do that? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Um, first off the jump, here's, look, look, all right. Immediately when the movie started, within the first five minutes, they got 80s white rock music playing, mm. and the scene is the dude throwing the drugs off the plane. Mm. From the music of the 80s and the throwing the drugs out the plane, I immediately went, oh, this is about to be funny. Yeah. This is about to be good. And especially when dude, it was once he threw all the drugs out the plane, his, he was going to jump out the plane, let the plane crash. But then he hit his head on the, the top of the ceiling of the plane uh -huh. before he jumped out, knocked himself unconscious, and he fell out the plane to his death. Right. So I said, man, this is about to be funny. I, then love, about I love your logic. Like, yo, and then this dude hit his head and then killed himself by mistake. So I knew it was going to be hilarious. No, just, from, <laughs> just, from the just from the vibe of what it was, I went, I see what kind of movie this yeah, is yeah, going to yeah, be. Yeah. But then about 15 minutes after that, I thought, I think this is about to be the dumbest shit I've ever seen. Oh, okay. So just off the top, and, and then Andy, when I talked to you, we both kind of felt like the same thing. Like, we at first we thought, okay, this is going to be a wild ride. And then somewhere along the way, it just petered out. Well, I thought it was going to get campy because that's what it seems like, <clears throat> right? Right, right? Because right. it's a cocaine bear. Right. Uh, I thought it was going to get real campy, and it started to. It started to like when the uh, when when uh, the first scene that you deal with the bear is the where the hiking couple. Yeah, when the leg flies off. Right. And lands. You're just yeah. Sure. I, I, we're ruining this for Nary, but I don't know if you could ruin this. Yeah, I don't think I can. But the leg is there, <laughs> this and I go fucking Shakespeare. I'm still, I'm still going. No, it's pretty close to Shakespeare. Uh, I'm still going. Like this could still be funny because it, it it's have it has the ingredients of just being a silly movie that like oh, almost like a like a Attack of the Killer Tomatoes or something sure, that sure, something that sure. you're gonna want to watch again because it's so silly. Uh, it didn't hold up that way. Uh, you know, it's it's almost like. And I've said this before, you know, we've seen the comedy hacky thing where in a movie, the sweet little animal becomes wild and enraged and attacks the face. And it's clearly a, a doll or whatever stuffed animal that the actor is wrestling right, with right, right, and right. doing all. So this was that on steroids. But the bear, oh, okay. the, the CGI, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. But the CGI, and you said, Andy, was phenomenal. Yeah, I thought the CGI, for, for this kind of movie, especially, right. they did a really good job. I really, the, the bear you know, looked like it was on cocaine. So uh, there was something... Can I ask you a question, right? Yeah. So this is one of, like, I have a martial arts movie podcast where we talk about martial arts movies and some of these, you know, martial arts movies right. are fucking cheesy as shit, man, I, right? I, I got something to ride on that, but go so, ahead. So I, we have a, a theory on our podcast that we think some of these movies, if you're watching them by yourself, are horrible. But if you watch them with friends... You will go, man, this is because you have a good time watching it and laughing at it or laughing say, with it. What did you say? I said that I think that this was something we should have saw in the theater because yeah. I think the other people would, with the, the campiness that started to go on, I think you would have found some, <laughs> yeah, yeah. some more funny in the movie. Or even just with a friend. You yeah. just like, even if it was just one other person, you could you could still be like, oh, man, that's fucking cheesy as shit. And then laugh about it that way. But in the right. theater, I think it would have came through a lot differently than it yeah. did with us watching it on our own. But the only problem with that is that, and this is where... We, you know, w where I think the problem is to me, I uh, I looked at the cast. It's a great cast. Sure. 
and Elizabeth Banks Elizabeth is the Banks, director, director. And then she but she's not doesn't have a good track record. Doesn't directing. have a good, but she's she's <laughs> she's directed quite a few movies. So she know she she's, she's last time she directed was Charlie's Angel. Uh, yes, the, the, uh, the first the original. No, 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 no. no. Oh. the last one, the, the latest oh, I one. I, I saw none of those. Okay, oh. as you shouldn't. But right. uh, I, made I'm the, I made the mistake of watching that shit in theaters. <laughs> I'm like, no, it looks good. The trailer looks good. Oh, yeah. And then halfway through the fucking movie, I looked over at my friend. I was like. This was a bad. This have you, bad have, you, really have you ever thought maybe they should find out who directed the trailer and then get them to direct the movie? Well, that's the problem they had with Suicide Squad, the original Suicide Squad. Yeah, who, they made the trailer and the trailer was so good that they thought they get the same company that edited the trailer to edit the actual film. That's why David Ayer is mad because he was like, "That wasn't a movie I made." They fucking cut it and re-edited it, and they fucked up the, the movie. The people who did the trailer because yeah. the trailer was so good. Mm. That's yeah. the problem they had. There's a difference between a sizzle reel I, yeah, I, yeah, I gotta, and a movie. I got I to gotta ask. I, I wonder if, I hope you guys have seen this clip. There's a clip of Steven Seagal. <clears throat> not, you know, young, in shape Steven. Steven now. Mm -hmm. And he comes out, and I guess he's given like an exhibition to a crowd of people mm. and, and photogs. And he's just, he's got two dudes dressed in the martial arts gear. And both dudes are rushing him almost at the same time. And in one swift move, he's just manhandling these dudes where he just does one move mm. and they, they do flips and land on the ground, like chops, land on the right. ground, and yeah, they get right yeah, back yeah. up and they keep yeah, going yeah. over and over. And somebody in the comments wrote, boy, he's an extrovert at Bullshito. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, Bullshito. That's so fucking good. Because it looks so choreographed. Because it, it is. Yeah. Because, you know, you know. Was he really, I'm going, is he really trying to get people to believe he's still but, this nice? So. You know who directed that? The same guy who directed the preacher with the fucking jacket that just fucking hits people and knocks people over with the jacket. You seen I, that I've shit? Seen it. You see the there's a video of a preacher and he's like be, literally beating the demon, the devil, out of get away from her, Satan. And he's literally just hitting them with their with his jacket with a fucking dress jacket and they fall over. Uh, uh, That's and then what one this by one, like, right. one by one, there's a line of people that just literally just right. uh, uh, and you're like, what the fuck? And then that guy also directed. The Michael Jordan commercial with his mom, <laughs> where his mom dunks. I can understand that one though, comedically. <laughs> yeah, that that, that that looked like it was intentionally supposed to be nah. funny and bad. Nah, the commercial. The commercial was just from the '80s. No, nah, but clearly you could see it. But now, but back then people were like, "No, that's his mom." <laughs> Get the fuck out of here! <laughs> just like they were like, "No, that's Eddie Murphy in fucking in uh, in 48 Hours." That's Eddie Murphy. You're like, "No, nah, that ain't 48." Like, look at him; he looks different. The stunt double is clearly different. Well, well yeah, but back I've always said for niggas, the stunt doubles they don't take the time for us <laughs> that they do with their white counterparts. Somebody even finally put on the internet, and I had been saying this: the scene in Beverly Hills Cop. When he throws a uh, Victor Maitland's man yeah, yeah. over the table. Yeah. If you pause it at the right time, that's Richard Pryor. Did you see Will Smith posted this the other day? He literally reshared. Somebody was watching uh, Bad Boys. I, I don't know which part, but right. it was Bad Boys. And when the Porsche fucking spins out and he fucking fr froze it, and it's clearly not Will Smith driving. The dude has a mustache and everything, like a I big saw, ass mustache. Yeah, yeah, I saw and that. Will Smith fucking reposted this video, and then he looks into the camera and he goes, yeah, you, you guys weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> <laughs> he he said that a lot lately. Yeah, <laughs> you ain't supposed to see um, that. You're supposed to see that. You know. So, you <laughs> Ray, yeah, you talked about this cast. Uh, listen, man, I think Ray Liotta, as I, far as a, a character actor that knows best. how to play a bad guy, and of course, his to me, his greatest of all time performance was as uh, Dumbo Drop. Uh, <laughs> what was the character's <laughs> name in fucking Goodfellas? Uh, Henry Hill. Henry Hill. Hill. Um, and I said to myself, look, man, I know when you get older or maybe Hollywood isn't on your dick as, as much as they used to be, you either get less picky about the roles you take or you just don't have a choice. And I'm like, would he have done Cocaine Bear in, in, in like 15 years ago? Brother, I just answered your question. He did Dumbo, Dumbo Drop. Drop. Yeah. Get the fuck out of my face, dog. Well, That's but, a fucking... And by the way, Dumbo Drop was a Disney movie, so that paycheck was massive, dog. But the other yes. thing... But to that... I think that's the problem. With this that's a bigger part of this problem with the movie. I think him dying. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think that, that doesn't look like his scenes that they had put for, together for him because mm -hmm. there was no development. There was no character. It was just there's basically three scenes. He just walks in. He does his business. It's and almost it's as kind of, if he just died suddenly, <laughs> like, and he wasn't able to film more scenes. scenes. Like, 
Did he but, die during the shooting? Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, I thought he died afterwards. But, but no, but that's what I mean. Yeah. I think this is what ruined. I don't think that the the movie was going to be an odd movie anyway. Right. Come on, it's Cocaine Bear, Cocaine Bear. and it's based on on a, 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 a. They say it's based on event, actual well, events. Well, what, what happened was there was a Cocaine co Bear. He just didn't kill anybody. Yeah. So there was a Cocaine Bear. They they have him in a museum. They have the fucking dude. So he snorted a bunch of because it really happened. There was that that's documented like by the government. They fucking threw uh, drugs out the plane because they were following this dude. And then he ended up dying. And then a bear found the cocaine. The bear didn't kill nobody in real life. The but the bear in ingested life. the cocaine? But the bear ingested the cocaine. They have the body of the bear. They did an autopsy on the fucking... They had the body of the bear in the museum in whatever, Tuscaloosa or whatever the fucking, whatever backcountry forest, you know. And they have the bear. They have the actual... It's a black bear. He did a bunch of cocaine, but he didn't kill nobody. You know? But they were just... That's where they got the inspiration yeah, the, for the story. The story. Where they were like... And their idea, if you listen to Elizabeth Banks, says she'll tell you that story, which, by the way, I had to look up and verify because I'm like, no, nah, bitch, you ain't going to get one over me. Mm. And uh, But it's a true story. But she said, from that, Spardy, what if this bear would have gone on a cocaine rat? And that's where this can't yeah. be silly story would happen. Right. But Ray, Ray Liotta's part, they, he's a gangster that has, but he doesn't ever become the gangster. He just, it, it, there's three scenes basically. Mm. And they're just all horrible scenes. And you could tell they're, they're probably something they did like early production. They were going to sure. go back. It's, it's not, that's what I think ruined the, this movie. I think there is a chance it's still a bad movie, but intentionally a bad movie. Would you have recasted it? Would you think they should have recasted it? If it was only three scenes, you should have recasted it. I don't know. Is there money for a movie like that to recast? Re because I mean, Ray Liotta has his money. Just get Joe Pesci. Yeah, yeah, Joe Pesci ain't gonna do that movie. Why? I mean, really, order that? I, I, in one of my yeah, notes, I went, he's, I went. He's not doing hardly anything at all. Yeah, now. exactly. But I went in. I, in my to. note, I went. Would Robert De Niro do Cocaine Bear? No, but there. But, but, but would you, any you one sure? of the Sopranos guys would have? Yeah, probably any one of the Sopranos guys. Anyone you pick, anyone they're they're not doing movies. They're not turning down. They're well, fucking, that's doing them a favor. They're they're, they're doing convention work. Literally, they're right. at conventions. So yeah, they would have done it. So when you see this, the when you do go to see right. this, watch the scene. It, it, it doesn't, there's no development. There's right, no, so I'm saying just recast it. Yeah. I just would have recasted it. I bet you they did it recast it out of quote unquote respect. They are like, oh, we don't want to fuck well, him over and get him, kick him out of that movie. Don't want to fuck him over. His, this is his last movie. Yeah. These are his last lines. I think he would have been fine if he would, I think he would have been. I think he would have appreciated yeah, them recasting like, it. I appreciate and put you scene. recasting this movie. <laughs> Listen, but he still I, got paid. I, I could kinda, he got paid, he, but I could his family got the money. I get what you mean by if you go see this with a bunch of people or in a crowded theater, the influence of them could make you enjoy it. Any and, comedy, bro. And, and, any comedy is like that. Any comedy is better with other people. We do this for a living, bro. You, like you perform said, but, in front of one person, that's fucking pretty fucking horrible. But, but again, when you see it in the first five minutes, there's something about it where you accept this is going to be some stupid shit, yeah. but it's a good stupid. Right, right, but, right. But then it actually is so stupid, you went... This is stupid. Right. But, but the, the very first scene, the ones that you're talking about, right. I laughed. I was laughing by myself. Dude, the way that, in the first in 10 minutes, when the bear attack, attacks the hikers, and when they show the first shot of them looking at the bear from a distance in the camera, and then they cut to, he's not in the frame, cut to, he's right there. And then he attacks him. I went, oh, I laughed. I thought this is just going to be silly, a wild ride. But then it just because it's so disjointed. I mean, seriously, the the guy, the camper is very, the camper is actually very funny. The guy, the the, the original guy, and then at the end right. of the movie, he's actually could have been funny. But none of the none of the stuff. There was no balance to the movie. None of their 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 silliness was equal to each silliness. What else? Yeah. I know Elizabeth Banks directed Pitch Perfect two. She produced pro, she produced all three of them, all Pitch Perfect movies, and I uh, like Pitch Perfect one and two. Right. I didn't see part three because part two was just. Okay, part one was great, part two was okay, and I didn't want to watch part three because I, I had fallen off. But I'm trying to figure out what she has directed. Go to her. Go to, I, I'm, go to I'm, I'm, I'm on her stuff. I'm going to show all. Well, I was going to just go right, right here where it says director. But if, but if you go to show all, you could literally just put director and it's just okay. Or well, do it that way, that's fine. There's producer and. and right. But if you just go show all. Okay, oh, where's show all? Right there. See all. See all. I'm sorry. See all. Well, I was and then right at, there, you go director. Well, I was just at director when you did all right, that. Well, and now where is it? Well, you just go to director. Just go to direct. Click on director. Okay. And it tells you everything she directed. Uh, Cocaine Bear. Right. <laughs> cat Person. Did you saw Cat Person? I never saw Cat oh, Person. Oh, she's the executive producer. doesn't say director. We're, we're a producer. No, it, it says, go to director. 
I, I, I pushed director. Oh, because pro his producer's still on? Yeah. See, where I had it, I was doing fine. Hey, buddy. See, Neri comes on this fucking thing, and we have a way of doing things, and then Neri <laughs> wants to show us how to do it. I forget you're old, and I forget that you're No, you're I had it. I, I, I just like to scroll down. I'll get to it. But, Dad, you could just it click was, on the it tab. Was, I it just, was, I'll scroll but, down. But it wasn't helping. Oh, all right. Director. Mm -hmm. Okay. Charlie's Angels. Okay. Pitch Perfect 2. Uh -huh. This is the one that wasn't bad, but it was weird. Four, movie 43. Yeah, it was a weird one. It was, but yeah, it was, it was, but it wasn't bad. Wasn't that a movie about a bunch of sketches? Yeah. 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 Some uh, of the sketches were fucking funny, bro. Dude, I was, yeah. some, I was, of, some of the sketches were too much. Really, like, yeah, I'm out. Right. Uh, some of the sketches were funny. Just a little, uh, just a little heart attack, and then uh, AIDS, we so did it. So she hasn't directed much. She's directed no. movie 43, 48, whatever it was. Yeah, 43. Pitch Perfect, Pitch Perfect 2. And then Charlie's Angels. And Charlie's Angels. Charlie's Angels sucked. Pitch Perfect 2 was okay. But did Charlie's Angels suck because of her direction or it sucked because of the way it was written? Yes. It, yes. yes. Both? Um, uh, Both? Yes. So my thing is always, not my thing, it's the, the truth. A director's first job and main job is to get the best performance out of your actors. So when you see bad acting, that's a direct reflection on the director because that means that they weren't able to get them to get better. It can also be bad editing though. Correct. Okay. But if you, if you watch Charlie's Angel and you watch this chick Who's just a bad actress in general? The chick from uh, Twilight. That's her. That's the main. Oh chick. yeah, yeah. Um, that it's just bad. And then mm. and then bad writing. Bad writing. I think is the main corporate of that movie being bad. But also but, bad. It's just. But bad did acting. you really think that Charlie's Angels need to be redone? I didn't like the original movie. So so I I mean I'm the wrong person to ask. Well, the only this. one I liked is with uh, Tom. Uh, no, I don't like any of those. You didn't like. You didn't think he was funny in it? I don't. I don't think. Bernie Mac was funny when he was Bernie Mac was funny in it, but I don't think Tom Green has ever been funny in his life. Dude, you didn't think any of that <laughs> in, his life, in his life. No, I disagree. In his entire I life, disagree. he's never been funny. Dude, I got nothing left for this movie. Uh, I think that's it, though. Yeah, so let's uh, go on to Creed. Well, but, but real quick, yeah. would you recommend it for anybody to see it? What would be your rating from one to five? Yeah, there you go. From Two. one to five kilos, what would you recommend? Yeah. <laughs> from one, five, five to top. Five to top, and you have to at least give it a one because you can't go zero. So between a one. you would give it a one, one kilo? Yeah. Andy, what would you give it between one and five kilos? I'd give it uh, 1,600 grams. <laughs> GT Andy. GT Andy. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> now, I know they say this is not associated with Rocky. The Rocky and the Creeds are two different things. Fuck that. This will always be associated to me with Rocky. Well, they said they Rocky's even, they, the seed that was planted that spawned this. They this bring like Rocky a branch up. off of the tree that spawned oh, okay. the tree. It's they like, bring him up in the conversation. They yeah, bring him up twice. in this again. They brought him up twice. They, okay. They and, had, and they never put the Rocky theme song. No. no, they didn't. But what they did do is during the fight scene, it's not the dent, 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 but it was something else. No, but it wasn't during the fight scene. You know what it was? It was afterwards when he was with his daughter. When they, went to the, sure? when they went to the grave. Yeah, but you know what they did? No, there? it was a scene in the ring where he, you know, where it looked like, uh-oh, it was supposed to be, da, 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 da. it was something else that they always play in the Rocky movies. What they always played in this one that they always play is the montage. The mm -hmm. montage, again, existed. The well, whole. you have to have that. You, no, no, you don't. If you want to break away and make your own fucking movie, do something different. But without no, the montage, how do you show? Yeah, how do you show growth? And how do you show? Yeah, how, how I do you, don't know. But that, I mean, it's, that, a, it's literally a sports brilliant. movie where they got to train. You go, what are we going to be there every fucking day? You're going to be a fucking but, calendar? But it's day this, 77 of all training. Right. He I, I, drags an airplane across. It had wheels on it. It's the same as dragging a heavy car or a truck. It's, that's it's like an airplane. That's, that's, like that's, saying saying make, that's like saying we're going to make chili without rice and no, meat. No, but every time they Without beans do, and meat. But <laughs> it's because the, you need it. It's a main ingredient. It's the same montage. Then then do the same. Don't but try wait, to wait, act like wait, you're wait, doing some different montage. Wait, wait, wait. When did he drag a car? A plane. A plane. No, he says it's the same thing as dragging a car. Well, they, I mean, we've seen that oh. though. It's on wheel. But when have you seen that? He, didn't he? Didn't he drag a car in one? Of, in, no. no, I thought he did one no. of, in one of the twelve no. Rockies. No. He didn't do no. it. No, okay. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't need this montage though. I really didn't need the one. But what do you replace it with? I don't know. But dragging no. the plane was like I, I didn't need. I got to be honest with you. You thought I, it was it was worth worth seeing it again? No, I I uh, I I don't. I would love a mon I would love a better mon. I was not impressed with this montage. Okay, that, that, that's, that's a better way to say it. It's better. It's not, it's, not, it's not that I don't want a montage. I just wanted a better one. I want an original one, something I want, interesting. I think the montage for 
Creed 2 was a much better montage than this one. I don't remember that montage. The montage with Creed 2 where he's in the back and, and this dude's driving the car, he's driving the Mustang. I thought that was one. No, that's Creed 2. Oh, you're right. That's you're Creed 2. Right. And I also liked in Creed 2. And then he two. said, get up. And then he's, and they put the tire in yes, the ring. Yes, and they both had and their put, leg in the tire. Yeah, yeah, and then, they fucking, and then yeah. he's hanging. Yeah. That's the yeah. fucking montage that I wanted. Right. And then you get this montage and you go, I mean, you know, okay. It's not, right. I wasn't hating on it. And I definitely wasn't like, we don't need a montage. But I was like, I wish it would have been better. I wish it would have been original. Um, it was original. It's not original. He was it's... punching a tree. Rocky's never punched a tree. Yeah, you know who punched the tree, wasn't it? Which karate movie has nope, them punching that, that the... Was, that was Kickboxer Van Damme. That was, was kicking And it, it wasn't an oak. Kicking. It wasn't was, an oak tree. It was a bamboo okay. tree, and he yeah. was okay. kicking it. Okay. Yeah. It was a baby bamboo tree. If you look at it, with punk-ass, baby-ass bamboo tree. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, so I saw in an interview <clears throat> where Stallone said he hated Creed Three. Right. But if the story is right, he'd be more than open to a, be, be a part of Creed Four. Right. And when he said that he didn't like Creed Three, he said... Well, he just felt it was going in a different direction in right. terms of Adonis being a family man, his, the birth of his daughter, and he didn't see where Rocky was being included, where he was necessary. Right. But then he said again, if they do a Creed, and he said it very adamantly, if they do a Creed 4 and the story is right, I'd love to be a part of it. And I thought to myself, what is he really trying to say? That well, it should be about Rocky? No, so here's the thing. So there's two things that I'm upset about that I'm confused about with Stallone, right? Because I'm a huge Stallone fan. Yeah, yeah. But when Rock, when Creed 2 came out, he is the one that is on his Instagram said he put a video of a post uh, filming when they were done filming on Creed 2 and he says, it's time, it's your time now. It's This is, you don't need me yeah. anymore. R Creed 2 literally ended with Rocky not in the ring saying this is, go enjoy it. Like, uh, 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 Donis was like, come on out. And he goes, no, nah, man, this is your time. You enjoy it. And that, that was, was significantly that, that was the handoff. That was the handoff. Right. And then he verbally, and then off camera on his Instagram said, it's time for the, the franchise to go on without me, blah, 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 stuff there. Then in between that and now, the producer, I don't know if you saw that, but the producer right. that owns the rights to Rocky, yeah. he's getting super old. He's like 95 years old or some shit. He handed the fucking rights over to his kids, not Stallone. And Stallone was hot about and Stallone that. Stallone was super hot. Posted about it, long ass post, vampire sucking, soul sucking, bop, 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 like literally all, all right. that shit there. <clears throat> and so part three comes out and he doesn't have him and now he's pissed. I'm like, but right. you said, you said you didn't want to be part of it. You said it was time to for the franchise to go on without you. You literally sat down outside the ring in the film. What the fuck are you complaining about? And I think it's just the fact that the dude handed down the fucking rights. So now, even he's though taking he, it out on, he's taking it out on him. Right. And he said in an interview, he said, "If there's a part four, I would love to do it as long as that other guy's not involved. That other guy being the producer. Uh. That's who he's talking about. So he's just mad. Dog. He's just mad at this fucking producer. And, and with good right, like he's saying, like I created this dude. Right. You want to be the producer? You want that? But when you're dying, why don't you give the? I, he's like, I would love. It's not about a money thing. He's like, I would like to hand that off to my children. He's like, have that's my legacy. Right. So that's why he's." But, you know, that's what he's mad about. If you're asking the question, who's he, who's he really talking? He's talking to the producer saying, go fuck yourself. Right. I want to be in it. But what, what would he play, though, in this next... The, 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 I, but before you, you answer that, my question is, listen, from a nostalgia standpoint, I'm always going to say, if Sly is, Sly is breathing, put him in the motherfucker. Yeah. As Mick? He is, he's been <laughs> Mick. He's, he's been Mick. That's who he yeah, is yeah, yeah, That's what I'm saying, yeah. though. But, but, but I'm just saying, do we really need him? No. No. This is okay. So I'm I'm mixed feelings about Creed three, and but one of the things I really do like is the fact that this was the first Creed movie that wasn't him fate that wasn't Adonis facing one of Rocky's ghosts. So it had been cheesy if Jonathan Majors was the son of Mr. T. That's what I thought it was going to be, and I was like, that's too much. I think it's just right. too much. It, it didn't follow the same storyline. It would have been like another different. same storyline. It would have been another, like, it's just, it's just, it's like, it, this is not the Death Star. It's the super Death Star. Like, oh, fuck off, man. Right, it's right, just right, bullshit. Right, right. But what did you think about the, the, the filming where it's Adonis in the ring basically by himself in his yeah. own head yeah, with yeah. that fighting? And it, it eliminates the whole- You mean during the fight when it, Turn from a fight, fight to, a dream. to like yeah, almost. It was fight, he was fighting with the, his cage, with the cage around. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. fighting. I was going to ask you what you thought about that. Yeah. So 
it, he was fighting his demons and as an artist, I could I respect the fact that this dude, this is Michael B. Jordan's first movie directing and writing. Oh shit, I didn't know that. So it was his directorial de- debut, and he wrote the movie. So as an artist, I respect the fact that he took something that has a formula to it. Yep. And said, "I'm gonna change it up." That's what I liked about. I it. appreciated the effort of trying to find trying something to find new to dig in and find something, something new. new in However, this. it it was kind of cheesy. It was kind of like mm. I, I think was it, like, it lasted too long, and it should have came maybe. in and out. Like you know, like he could have got hit and then yeah, back and, yeah. And there was then, something missing in it. I don't know what it is, but it was something I feel missing. The same way I feel like, I feel like it was a blowjob, but not a good one. And mm. you're like, I I should like this, <laughs> but you do, but you don't. But I don't. Right. But I should like it more. But I for some reason it's, like, it's that. It's like I don't, I don't know. And then you're like, how was that? You're like, well, I came. But I appreciate. Okay, but I appreciate the effort. Yeah, the attempt was there yeah. the, to do something different. But that's what I meant about the montage. Like you see, you yeah. worded it better. Something deeper. Something been, more. I wish it would have been. I wish the montage would have been better. I like the montage for part two because he was able to do the FaceTime with his. Like it showed right. the, the the back and forth. Fourth. And part three, just like it, like you said, I didn't mind the plane thing. I thought that was cool, but it, I mean, he was punching a tree. But I was just like, I need something more. I need. A, I need a more. You wanted something that you would felt like you were like that would have got your heart beating with. Yeah, him. I wanted something that I wanted to go try to do. You know what I'm saying? Like I wanted to right. be like, yo, I want to be that kid running and fucking getting a tire and fucking let's go at each other with a tire. There was nothing that made me say, let's go get a plane. Like, what? <laughs> like, <there's> no, <laughs> you, you, but, but you are so right, though, when you say, I mean, in the first Rocky, when he runs up the steps in Philadelphia. You go, I want to do that. Yeah, everybody want, everybody's yeah. still doing I mean, it. To I this mean, day, I people mean, do, I mean, it. Aries do it. So Aries was a fucking, was on slides, and I'm like, yo, we walking up these steps, dog. Let's go. <laughs> but that's my point with something being so iconic, and you try to duplicate it. You got to try to find either, like you said, something better, yeah. like a better montage, yeah. or you got to find another way to another way to, to, to send that same feelings out. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's my problem. I thought it was pretty. That dream sequence, was pre- that dream fight, a great attempt. It was a great attempt. It was a good attempt. I like the cage. I like the fact that you saw the mattress in the back. That that's where the shitty ass mattress that he used to sleep on as a kid. Right. That was cool. I like that. Was cool. Th- Again, it was like, I can't pinpoint why I didn't like it. I could tell you I like these ingredients in the gumbo, but for some reason, the gumbo just ain't doing it. It's just, I. Right. Mm. What do you think about uh, uh, Jonathan Major's performance? I mean, he put a stranglehold on that shit. Man. Let me tell you something, man. Between him playing Kang and... I got it right, but don't <laughs> boom. <laughs> Between him playing <laughs> Kang and... Uh, Qu- what is it? Quantumanium? Yeah, yeah. And his character in this... You know, some dudes, when they try to play bad guys, it feels like they always try to overdo it. Right. He has a quiet intensity about him without having to yell, without having to be too big. It's just it's just direct and quiet. And it's it's I don't know, man, it's an intensity about him and, and being calm. So I haven't seen uh, Quantumania yet. Really? No, I haven't seen Quantumania yet. But here's what I like about his because he came out as Kang or in the TV show, in the in the Loki TV show. So I've seen his performance as Ken right. to some extent, to a small, a small degree. Um, but he's what I like about him in Creed 3 as the quote unquote bad guy is because he doesn't think he's the bad guy. And those are the best bad guys. When you're doing shit and you're not, it's not because I, just because I want to rule the world. Thanos being the best, it's because he was, thought he was doing right. That's he was like, I'm doing what's right for you, whether you like it or not. Like, I'm trying to like fucking help you. But it's clear that he 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 had a massive chip on his shoulder. Correct. But he doesn't feel that he's the bad guy. He feels that all this is justified. This was I fucking Someone stole his life. This. Yeah. Somebody you stole my life. Somebody I I deserve this. I was gonna get this shot. I was on the way. I was on the track to be a fucking contender, to get a fucking title shot. Like, you know, in his mind, that's what he thought. But the best part of his acting, which when you're bringing it up, is that if we didn't know what the storyline was going to be and it wasn't out there so much, you wouldn't have known that he was going to flip it like that because he he comes out out his right. acting is so good you believe oh this is my my this is my boy yeah I'm out of jail I'm just looking for a spot yeah and then you slowly he slowly and he doesn't builds take the money that. he doesn't when when he's trying yep. to slide him money he doesn't take the money money I'm he's, so broke that even me watching a fucking movie about somebody handing him a <laughs> uh, thing of cash I was like take the money bro. he's <laughs> yelling take the money <laughs> in the theater like, take I, the money I, oh, right. like, oh. I saw this in Mexico by the way which is hilarious because I saw it with Spanish subtitles. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, the words were in English, but the fucking subtitles that came in Spanish. Right. And I speak Spanish, and I read Spanish, but I've never read that much Spanish 
it's been a long time since I've read right. that much Spanish <laughs> because all the sign language was all in Spanish. Oh, so shit. I'm literally reading the whole, there's the entire scene where it's like three minutes of me reading in Spanish. And I was like, yo, eh, todos tus combatos. Y así me gusta tu pelea. Right? And I'm reading all this right, shit. I'm like, right. and I'm like, fucking, I'm like, hey, God damn, I'm getting the hang of this shit. All right, here right. we go. Like, it's, yeah. How was, your, was your Spanish better after you left the theater? It, it was, it was. But only because the fucking guy next to me kept selling me mangoes. It was weird. You know what? Let me speak on this now, now that you've mentioned that. <laughs> Not I, I mentioned I, mangoes. I, no, 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 no. The, the guy <laughs> sitting next to you. Uh, I went, like I said, I went and saw this by myself here at the Cine Bistro, CMX. Okay. Um, at City at City Place, here, City Place here in Doral. And I'm sitting in the seat. And this is one of those where you order your food. They bring it to you. About a beat later, in comes this. And there's probably, including me and me, nine people in the theater. This black woman walks over. And she's got on her tray a, a bowl of popcorn, a margarita, and a glass of wine. Mm. And when I, she sits two seats over from me. Margarita and wine. Margarita That's and hilarious. wine. Hilarious. When I say this bitch talk to the screen, to damn near the whole fucking movie. Like she was at home by herself. And I'm telling you, man, I was trying. I was, I'm ignoring it. But she's verbally, yeah, mm -hmm, don't go in there. No. See, but he hit him with the wrong place. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, nobody else is bothered by this. So I got my phone. And what I do is when I know... Andy and I are going to talk about a movie on the podcast. You know, I, I write notes in, in right, my right, phone. Right. So at one point during that, you know, the climactic fight scene with, with uh, Creed and I don't know what this, his character's name was, Jonathan Majors in the film. But during that fight scene, at one point, it, it, when Majors hit him and kind of did something illegal, she said, that's illegal. He, he can't even be. And finally, I leaped up at the same time. I went, are you fucking serious? And then she looked at me with this puzzled look, and then she didn't say nothing else. And about two minutes later, I go in my phone to type a note, and she goes, well, I'll stop yelling if you stop texting. I said, my texting ain't disturbing nobody. I can see your light. <laughs> Finally, nigga, I just got up and sat way in the back from the middle row that I was in where nobody could see my light, and I didn't have to hear this bitch talk. I call it nigga-isms. You know, when I'm on stage, a lot of times, black people, again, when we perform, a lot of us do the, mm-hmm, show this. Well, I wouldn't do that. What is it about us? Well, we got to do nigga-isms. Shut what? the fuck up. What is it that you were saying? Like, the whole time you were talking, you have this thing, you talk about this, where it's like, some people are huxtable, and, and some people some, are... Yeah, blah, yeah blah, I'm a huxtable nigga. And then there's good times, niggas. It's, it's so funny, because the whole time you were telling the story about her yelling... Right. At the screen, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, so she, she's a, a good times. She's a good times. All right, yeah. Do, do yeah, she knows Buffalo butt. <laughs> See, and, and you know, I've heard white people complain about black people doing this, so I know white folks don't do it. Do Latinos do this? No. So this is black shit. Now we don't like yelling out because we don't like attention. Because then that's that's how immigration gets. Oh, that's how immigration. Exactly. You can't cause attention. You can't be like ah, dale, hook, puta, no, and they'll be like, oh shit, that, that's how fucking migra comes, and they nah. I don't. That's not so, true, though, man. Yeah, I know. You know, it's so it's not true. true. Come on, man. <laughs> not even. For comedy. I'm not going to let you. No, I'm not going to let you have that. I thought that he's like, wait a minute. That joke is inactive. I mean, it's, no, it's no, no, joke, no, no, no. I'm not going to give that to you because I, what I do notice, though, is the white people that you're, that you're complaining. What is up with these white women holding the roof up now? What do you mean? They're doing this. All throughout your show this weekend, all the white women in here were going well, like this. That's just white folks still trying to be cool at yeah. all times. When is that from? What? 1994? Yeah. You don't remember the Raise the Roof? Yeah, I remember it, but I can't remember what year it was from. It was, it was 94. Hot. It was hot around the same time Whoop Dead Is yeah. was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're this saying the same this thing, Miami thing. 94? Yeah. This my. I would agree with you on the Hispanic thing and not saying shit during a comedy show, though. Because they didn't say shit. <laughs> but we don't say shit during a movie either. We don't really say shit. Like, well, I've never, I, I've no, never been. It really does. I'm, I'm really one of the ones that talks the most, but I only talk if there's somebody next to me and I'm trying to make them laugh. That's the only time I'll talk during a movie. But I won't be like, mm-hmm, get him. I'll just say, like, like when I was watching Black Panther, I remember watching Black Panther day one. I'm talking about the Thursday night before Black Panther, like, as I was coming out. And <laughs> they show the, the fucking opening scene is the purple tree. With the right, fire. yeah. And I said, oh, I love the Lion King. I said that shit out loud. Because I just wanted to get a right. laugh. And it, it wasn't, the story hadn't started yet. Right. You just saw the visual image of the tree. So I said out loud, Oh, I love the Lion King. And then the story continued 
or started and it was really the Lion King. And I was like, oh shit, I was just fucking around. These motherfuckers really took take the Lion right. King. But you didn't say all that out loud. No, no, I, but yeah. I did say the Lion King part out loud. But I just wanted did to get, get a laugh? laugh. Yeah, I got a laugh and then and then we moved on or whatever. All right, but just real quick, black people, shut the fuck up. Ah, <laughs> damn, man. All right, back to this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, mm. something that was something that was kind of building up to what I thought it was going to be, but it wasn't. And then I wondered, was it worth it? You know, I saw in in, in some of the previews or, or on social media that scene where uh, what's her name, Tessa Thompson, mm. Uh, mm. Creed's, mm. Creed's uh, mm. a woman in the movie, they get into this intense argument, and he's basically telling her there's just something he don't want to talk about. And the whole time I'm going, and, and the movie's leading you to ask the question, what is this big? The reveal thing where, where where Adonis feels like he owes Jonathan Major something. Right. Something major happened, and right. the more they avoid show him avoiding wanting to talk about it, why he beat up the dude Leon. Yeah. You went. It's got to be something really deep. I thought it was rape. Of dude, course. I thought it was that. Yeah. yeah. And when it wasn't that, I went. Aren't you disappointed? Yeah. yeah. No, I wanted it to be rape, man. <laughs> yeah, Come well, on, yeah, man. I thought, you know, I thought I wanted it to be molestation, dog. I thought that's what it was. When he said to him as a teenager, yeah, I ain't no little kid no more, it just starts wailing on yeah. him. And then they further went into it where Felicia Rasad's mm -hmm. character didn't want to talk about it. Mm. She's like, you can't keep not talking about it. I thought, yeah, dude must have molested him yeah. when he was a kid. Because Felicia knows about not talking about that. She knows about keeping her mouth shut when people you know, are around. <laughs> I told her, no matter what happens, don't ever, ever discuss it. You're always going to be my wife. Both in the sitcom world and reality. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, I felt the same way. I'm like, oh, that's what it is? All right. Yeah, well, it felt I'm like right. that was a letdown, man. Yeah, it but was a letdown. It, it didn't feel, okay, it just did. the way that they made it all feel, it didn't I feel didn't like that was the right. Much. They built it up too much. But I, I don't, I think they changed it. I think there was a change in it. Sure. That, that's, I believe that that somebody that somebody in the studio was like, yo. That's too much. We're trying to get to a PG-13 rating. We're not trying to get, that's, that's too heavy. Yeah, but that, that build up I see what that result was. But I feel you. But I think, I think Andy's onto something. I, I can see them saying that that's a studio decision that got changed. Because the gun, pulling out a gun on somebody who just beat you. That's what I'm saying. The build up was so. Yeah. I think that it was changed. I, I wish someone would confirm that. I wish somebody, I wish they would have raped him. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I wish they would have molested him. Uh, uh -oh. You got to edit that part. I wish they would have molested them. Now, keep that one in, but you can't keep the R word. It that was, one. here it was, when the, in the fight, it was the, that was the music they kept in there. Not the, dun, dun, but dun, I think dun, that was dun, the part. Dun, dun. No, no, no. That, but I thought that was the, at the kid with the cemetery. No, no, okay. that was in the ring. Maybe, when, when, maybe. He won, when he won, when he won the fight, oh, okay. then they played that. Maybe I was asleep. I got, I got a question, though, that has nothing to do with what you guys are talking about. But there's the scene where they're eating in the restaurant. Yeah. And he says, oh, you came back like to like, like he described it as the hood. That's the nicest hood restaurant I've ever seen in my whole life. Well, with the, the camera was zoomed in so close. With dark see. wood, beautiful glass, nah, everything niggas, nice. Niggas it looked like a Roscoe's. Roscoe's is hood. No, nah, that didn't look beautiful. like a Roscoe's. It looked like a Houston's is what let, it looked let me, like. Let me speak for the black delegate. Uh, when the camera <laughs> the black is, delegation, can you please, brother? Yeah, when, the black, when, the, when the shot is so zoomed in, you can't see outside of the scene. That's why you don't know that it was some hood shit. That, if you zoom in close enough, you edit out the mistakes. You keep out the mistakes. If they widen that shot, there's some niggas doing some heinous yeah, shit you in can't, there. Because if you zoom out, then you see the rats, and then they get shut down. The restaurant gets shut down. So you got you you to keep see it the, black, the black women in there with the bonnets and the niggas sagging their pants and rolling blunts. Yeah, you, you, you saw You would have saw that. There was no one in there saying anything. He didn't hear anybody in the mm -hmm. room. He's packing some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga isms. There was no, that was not a hood mm -hmm. restaurant. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I, I will say this, and this might be kind of corny, but I, I thought it was, and I, I want to say if Michael B. Jordan was the director, maybe this was a good call on his on his part. The fact that when the movie was, after he won the fight, he still went back to Jonathan's locker room mm. and showed the two black men can be at odds and still be right with each other. Because they could have not done that and just went, oh, the good guy kicked the bad guy's ass, the end. So what I will say to that is, what I, I appreciated that, but what I did not like is that they did it in part two. 
Did they really? Where he went into where he went Drago? Into, he went into Drago's locker room. Yeah, but but this is different because it's, it's two black it's, men. Yes. No. The stigma being that black men, all the violence, we don't support each other. Black on black crime, we're not unified. Black men don't know how to come together. So the fact that they had the beef, they fought each other, but he's still like I just my didn't, brother. I just didn't need that. Right after the fight, because they did it in part two. Well, you don't so, have yeah, to. Yeah, wait, wait, it ain't about you, nigga. You don't have to. Need wait, wait, wait. It. It's for us. But no, no. But no. It's there's a conclusion to that because one is he did get his shot and he yeah. didn't win, and the other part is Michael B. Jordan's character uh, Adonis accepts uh, responsibility for where he did no, leave it, not e calling, even not not even leave. more, even more. Yes, you're right. Even more is Jonathan uh, Major saying, "You're not to blame." Yeah. It was my fault. I, that's my responsibility. Him taking responsibility for that. Well, but, even more to it. To yeah, my of course. Yeah. No, no, no. All I'm saying right. is... It that's the difference between the Drago scene I and this that, one. I get that, but what I, what I would have wished would have happened if they would have done that not at the stadium. Later. If they would have been in the next day. Because they did, it did... The filming didn't end there. They went to the... They went to the... To the uh, to the um, gravestone, to Apollo's graveyard. That happened after the fight. So the movie didn't end right there after the fight. So they could have done a scene... Just for that. Well, just for that. Shit, they could have done the scene. Jonathan Majors could have been there to fucking show love to Apollo at the cemetery. And then they have that same, it's all right, you know. I must have walked out of the theater early. Yeah, you must I don't remember out. that. Yeah. Maybe it's all a Mexico version. That's probably what it is, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm yeah. saying, I'm sorry, international version. That's the first time I ever went to the movie theaters not in America. The only other time was Puerto Rico, but that's still America. Or when you get the bootleg black version from the barbershop, that scene will be in there. <laughs> That that is is that it? No, um, <laughs> that, felt, that felt very you weird. Know what I, you know what I did? It. I uh, I don't. Um, so how did you feel? Uh, the the this is a scene that I feel should have worked better than it did, and I liked it, but I still think that it missed something. Is the scene when he went on first take? It was. Yeah. It felt forced and weird and awkward. But it still worked, but it still should have well, worked it, better. It felt like that because if you've ever watched First Take, nobody's ever called in. Well, yeah. No, forget about nobody's ever called in. Jonathan, Jonathan Majors is in the dark. He's at nighttime. Okay. And fucking, and then, and then First Take is it's at 11 right, in the morning. Right, right, and you're like, right, right. That too. Fuck? I didn't even think about yeah, that. Yeah, and I'm but like, that too. But I'm watching this and I'm like, motherfucker, First Take is at 11 o'clock in the morning. And dog. they like, don't do call ins. And they don't do call ins. Oh, we, yo, well, we just got a call. We just got a cut. Like, he just so happened to be watching. And then they were like, and then right. he was like, but what were you there to say to And he has the number. Hey, Adonis, what were you there to begin with? Even what was the purpose of you even being there? Like, what was the supposed reason? Well, wasn't he promoting the fight? With, but he wasn't with, promoting nothing. The fight was already over. He, Jonathan oh, okay, Majors okay. was already champ. So right. what the fuck you're was right, he there? We've been hearing a lot right. of talk and Jonathan Major saying a lot of shit about you. And he's like, nah, we're going to keep that private. Then what the fuck are you on first take for, Donis? Right. What did, are you even there? It felt clunky. It right. did because it felt like Stephen A. Smith's old show that he used to have, actually, that was late, on later in the oh, day. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, what yeah, it yeah, felt yeah, like. Yeah, it yeah. didn't feel, because that would have been a short, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. something he had. But so, that's what I was just like, I'm like, it still worked. Like The final, like, when he said, we're on, when he, that challenge that he yeah. laid down a challenge and then Stephen A goes, oh, it's all not. Like that, right. that moment worked. Right. But that scene, it's like if that scene was a minute and a half, the last five seconds was like, all right, let's do it. But then the first minute and 25, you're like, what the fuck is happening here? This is a clunky as shit. Right. Didn't Max Kellerman have a, a spot in one of the older movies? Yeah. Yes. That's the other thing. Yes. I literally said this. The ring announcement in Creed 3 is atrocious. Atrocious. <laughs> it's so like I was watching it going like, could they not get Max Kellerman? Like, is he right. too much? Did, right. they, did he request or Jim too much Lampley money? or you know anybody who's right. not these can we get the fucking guys from the original Rocky movie, right. even though they're 95 and one of them is dead? <laughs> this is this is it was so bad. Their ring announcement was so fucking bad. And if you're watching, and I know it sounds stupid if you're a viewer or listener and you're thinking to yourself, oh, really? You're gonna nitpick that? But if you're watching a boxing movie, yeah. that's a big part of a fucking boxing. Right, uh, if you're right. watching a boxing fight, if anybody's ever been to a live sporting event, when you go there for the first time, you realize how big of a job an announcement is. Because you're like, oh, I don't... Like, I'm a big fan of wrestling. And I remember right. going to a wrestling match in person for the first time. I was like, oh, this is just... All you hear is boom, pow, boom, right. pow. You don't really get right. the same fucking feel. This ring... 
fire these motherfuckers, though. Don't ever bring them back. Dude, I, I know, again, you talk about nitpicking, but, I, you know, we point out some of the things that you just go, come on, man. You know, in today's day and age, when uh, Cree goes to the uh, beach to, to confront right, 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 right. Uh, Jonathan right, right. Majors about, hey, man, you had that dude break my man's hand. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. And then he punches him. No one's got their camera phones out. Yeah. No one's recording this yeah. in 2023. Yeah, yeah. This is a major moment the where only the reason- ex-champ is getting hit by the current champ and not a fucking phone is in the scene. So the only reason... The only reason, and I agree with you, this is not it's not believable. Right. But the only reason I would say that if you're part of this, uh, Jonathan Majors, what's his character's name? I, I, I can't I'm remember from, his character's so, name. So um, the only reason, as a as one of his people, one of his fucking crew, because right. he has a gun and he's just right. got out of jail, so you don't want this motherfucker. You don't Damien. want Damien. Thank Damien. Damien. Yeah. So you don't want Damien. If you're if you're part of his crew, right. you're supposed to be watching over him and being like, don't fucking record this guy because he has a gun on him and he's still on fucking probation. But so, everybody? But right, right. That's what I'm saying. But realistically, we just coming off a of fucking John Morant showing a fucking gun on his own Instagram live. So right. realistically, we know even the people you hang out with are the stupidest motherfuckers. Right, that you right. Can. <laughs> they're not. They're not really watching over you, dude. And the other but thing, I feel you on the, that. the other thing is when he when he has to fight with the Latin fighter. Mm. Uh, and he wins. Mm. Uh, uh, Creed's trainer, played by my man Wood Harris, mm. is so upset. He's like, I told you, I told you, this dude's out of control. He got a chip on his shoulder. I'm like, yo, he won fair and square. No, not fair. No, not fair and square. Not fair. He used elbows. He was not fair. He was on oh, the Latin dude. Yes, the Latin that's why dude is... he has his face cut. Yeah, dude, he fucking hit him with his elbow in the face. He hit his fucking bicep. He was hitting his under his uh, his ass. He was hitting when him in the, the back black of the head. woman was yelling that at. That's fight, not he legal. Was... That's what she was talking I, I about. I love, love the fact that he won the title dirty. Because it just goes to go, oh, okay. Because it well, makes okay, it more believable. Okay, but, but, but listen, there's a little dirtiness in boxing. <laughs> no, dude. No, yeah, there no. is. Yeah, that, there that, is. That whole fight was real dirty. But they did. A, they made a, a major, that was a major story, pl- uh, a story plot to show he, he, he was dirty. Right. I like that as, a, as an audience because it makes me believe that this fucking 40-something-year-old man who's never had a professional boxing match could win the fucking title. Like, of course he can win the title. He's built like a fucking brick a right. shit house, and then he fucking cheats. So, yeah, that's okay. I, I believe it now. <laughs> okay. It's not just him. You know what bothers me? Why didn't he fucking box in prison? They could have had him very easy to write in the story that he was a boxing champ. In prison. He was a prison champ. Yeah, I, I don't think they let, you, they let you train. You can exercise, but I don't think if you're... If you, uh, Wesley if, Snipes has shown me that you could be a boxing champ in prison. For real? No, I'm talking about that movie. Remember that movie that he did? No, I don't Him remember. Him and Ving Rhames did a boxing movie. Oh, that was the straight to 99 cent bin movie. Yeah, I didn't no, see no, no. It was. it was in theaters. Really? Yeah, Vin, part one was in theaters. It was called Undisputed. And okay. Wesley Snipes was a boxer that got that got sentenced for murder. But in but he was in prison and he was the prison champ in an interleague, interprison league boxing. It was ridiculous. Right. But again, we don't know the difference as an audience member. Right. You don't know the fucking. You don't know if you would have been like he was a champion prison. Right. He was a prison champ. You would have believed that. Would you not have believed that? Uh, I mean, I, I just, I just know that in in real life, I've always known this. They don't let you fight. You can't be. Bo- See, here's a. That's the difference between. A, I don't know real life prison shit. So I don't either. But I. But as a boxing fan, but you know. But as a boxing fan, I know they don't let <laughs> boxers box in prison. I, you I, can work out and stay in shape. But they won't let you. But I thought, he, I, if you would have told me they let you box in prison, I would have believed it because I don't know shit about prison. I don't either. Yeah. But, but I know about boxing. But would you not have believed it? The exhibition, if they let you fucking be exhibition boxers in prison, would you have believed it? Okay. Yeah. It's an easy sell. It ain't that hard, dog. Well, listen, uh, I don't have anything left on Creed, but we do have seven minutes left and there is something I want to address while you're mm. here. Um, and, and Nary and I share this, uh, this sentiment very much so. We, we actually are upset that a lot of the general public shitted on Black Adam. So mad. I thought that, so I, fucking I, mad. For the I record, saw it again I, last weekend. Dude, bro. I'm telling you, I, again. I have it on my, on my video recorder, yeah. and I watch it almost every other no, week. I saw it again last week on a cruise ship in a big screen, in a fucking, in a theater. Right. So it was like another movie theater. Right. I saw it again. I'm like, man, this fucking movie's good. Like, it's so good. I, I don't, I don't get, why do you think people don't get what we get? I honestly, so there was a couple of things. I think it's the backstory that they 
I think even especially now, especially now, because if you look at the the user ratings, it's much higher than the critics. The critics is like thirty five or forty, and the user rating is like eighty, eighty five. This so right. users, normal people liked it. Critics just trashed it. For the, and I'm talking about but, for uh, the most part. But again, I'm just saying I, it's, it's a lot of what I've seen on TikTok and Instagram. A lot of regular people shit on it too. Yeah, but here's the thing. I think it's because people who hate something are louder than people who don't like some, who like something. Like I, that's a that's a fact. If you'll see more complaints, more it's it's people are more willing to write a negative review than they are a positive review. That's a fact about anything. If you go to a store, if you look at a Yelp review, because if you hate something, you're more it's a lot as a human being. You're more inclined to be like this mother. I hate it. This month. it right. takes work and energy and effort to write a review, whether it's positive or negative. And so if you're positively driven, it has to be exceptional, right? Like if you just got good customer service at the tire place. You're not gonna write nothing. You're just gonna be like, "That's t- that's good customer service." But if you got shitty customer service, you're like, man, these motherfuckers are the worst. They right. fucking rip me off. Like, so when people are angry about something, when people don't like something, they're the loudest. They're the ones that be like, "Fuck but, this motherfucker." But you're saying you think this is one of the better facts superhero movies. Let facts. me tell you something, man. Facts. I it, think I think The Rock was just as born to play this yes. as Schwarzenegger was the Terminator. Correct. I mean, f- so from, from the time he comes on screen. To, and I know a lot of people like to say acting wise, he's the rock. He's always the rock. No, but he's not in this. But he's not in this. Okay, but so it, he's not charismatic in this. Okay, but in, in what you just said in the Terminator, the Terminator was one of his first movies, right? So you weren't saturated with Arnold Schwarzenegger at this time. So that but, but, led but, to but, a better that led to accepting that character. Do you, could you think, see anybody else playing well, the Terminator? No, well, let me ask you this question though: If you ha- if the Rock wasn't the Rock. And then you take him out and you put him in this movie. Doesn't that make this a better movie? No, to people? no, because I think it's the opposite. Because people who shit on him for acting, you can shit on him for acting all you want. I don't care. That's your opinion. But the rock that I see on Instagram, who's always smiling and fucking laughing and fucking making jokes, is not Black Adam. No, it's not Black Jumanji. Adam, it's not Jumanji Rock. Right. So he wasn't Jumanji the Rock. He wasn't all of the, He wasn't silly and goofy and funny and charismatic in Black Adam. He was the serious bad it, dude that he needed to be. But it was harder to take him in. It, I just saying because of the saturation that The Rock has, it was harder to take him I, so I seriously. Don't, I, don't, in that I don't agree. But then again, I'm a huge, I'm a, a major fan of The Rock. And with that said, I will say this as a disclaimer, dude. I'm a massive fan of The Rock and what he does. But I am not that dude that likes everything he's in. I'll tell you, he's been in shit. I've never and will never watch Doom. I but fucking uh, um, the the um, the fucking one where he's a lifeguard. Where the fuck? Uh, oh, Baywatch. Baywatch was trash. Uh, right. The fucking ones with the building that he's on top of the building and the fucking building's collapsing and all he has to I do. I like is, that one. Yeah, and all she has to do is turn off the iPad and turn it back on. Fuck you. Did you that like Rampage? Stupid. Rampage. I like. Oh, it was better than the other ones because it was meant to be silly because it had a giant gorilla and a giant lizard. Okay, I'm in. And a giant wolf. And a giant wolf. Did you like Get Shorty but, too? But you know, hold on. Yeah, but you, but so I did really, too. I thought really he was great in that. But you do know Rampage is based off of oh, 80s video games. Game. Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. No, but that's what I'm saying. So if I'm watching Rampage and I'm watching these giant animals go out, that's fu- That's okay. But if I'm watching him like, oh, I got shot in the back. That's why I lost my leg. What? Excuse me, sir? The fu- that's what happened in that movie with the fucking right. Inferno and, t- and right. you're like, just come on, bro. I think- Again, I'm a huge fan of The Rock, but I, I am not that guy who's going to be... I'm not like that with anybody. But you didn't like Ben Affleck in Batman, did you? No, Ben Affleck is the best Batman. Thank you. Okay, okay. And see, I've said this from day one. Perfect. Go, go back to listen to old episodes of Vubro. What's up, bro? My podcast with Aries when me and Aries watch Batman versus Superman. Before that, I was literally saying he was, Aries was like, Christian Bale still the best. I'm like, get the fuck. I hated Christian Bale so much. And, and you know, I, I admit it that later, yeah. when I watched it, Remember one time we were I, I, right. after a show you were asked there was a guy with a tattoo of a Batman tattoo and you're like right. who's the best Batman and you said he said Christian Bale and I said I told you and I go dude I think you're confusing the best Batman movie with the best Batman because the best right. Batman I said and at that time uh, this was a thousand years ago so uh, Ben Affleck hadn't been around and I said at that time I was like it's Michael Keaton it's blah blah, blah. it's Mike it's, it's Val Kilmer it's blah blah and then I said space bar space bar space bar space bar that kid in my Halloween, in my in my neighborhood that went Halloween trick-or-treating and came to my house as Batman <laughs> and Dan fucking Bale. I hated Bale so much. But but this is so this much. is but well, this I, is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just want to ask. Do you hate Bale more than Robert Pattinson? Yes. Yes. I gotta put oh, yes. I gotta yes. put Bale over Robert Pattinson. Yeah. No, I Robert Pattinson as a, a good Batman job. was okay. Yes. I, I was okay. As a Bruce Wayne, get <laughs> <laughs> 
but he wasn't supposed to be Bruce Wayne yet. He's supposed to be the young, youthful person that hasn't figured out what being Bruce Why Wayne is. Why is your hair parted down the middle? I don't know. Why that do was, that like was a, a bad... Goth, but why that do you was, look like a goth high school That kid? was a bad decision yeah. on the people making the movie. Yeah. I'm not going to give Character it all Character design. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 why is your hair parted down the middle? What, are you here, a fall fall? Let me, let me, go, <laughs> where, where this, <laughs> let me go back to what my point was. Don't you think that uh, The Rock suffers a little bit from what Ben Affleck suffers because of their character, their saturation in the market, their movies... They're not taken ser- They can't. No, not no, no, the same no, way. no, no, no. People take as an actor. People take Ben Affleck now, seriously. Now, now, the after town, Ar- after Argo, after Argo, Argo, the town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, but that's not. But I get what he's saying. Good Will Hunting. It, so what happened was in Gigli, 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 Shitley. So that movie suffered even before it even came out because it had Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez, and people were just tired of it. They were oversaturated with Ben Affleck. When did Daredevil come out? What? When did Daredevil come out? That was because Daredevil that was, was the movie that made them go. Him as Batman, no way. But yeah. I think it is not only just the saturation; it's just that people don't see characters that they've got familiar with in other things yeah. as that superhero. I, look, but here's the thing: if it was, if I could agree, I could even accept that, Andy. If people's gripe with Black Adam was only The Rock, but they're not. People just people don't like the movie for whatever fucking reason. I I have a friend of mine, a friend of mine who's on the Movie Bros podcast with me. And he said, I didn't like the movie because the whole time I'm watching the movie, I'm thinking, like, how is this going to fit into the DCU universe? And I go, I what? what? Who cares how and it fits I, And I said, I've, I've never gone into a movie thinking, how is this going to fit into the bigger picture? In fact, I, I'm the, I well, go into I, a movie and like, let me see what you gave me in this movie. Well, listen, if if and this is what why I'm so mad with Warner Brothers in DC, because I'm going, if you do it right, these pieces all make sense. Right. Cavill is Superman. Uh, Rock is Black Adam. My man doing Shazam. Yeah. This shit is such a mess. I saw the dude that plays Shazam. He and, he, and he was saying, yo, man, that scene in the first Shazam, we did everything. I did everything I could to get Henry Cavill. With somebody in the studio, yeah, they that, fought us and made the dumb decision to do a headless Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking hated that. Yeah. That we're supposed to do a Black Adam versus Shazam. Where's the trilogy? Black Adam, Shazam, and Superman. Right. And now say this. After seeing the fucking previews, and I was never a big fan of Ezra Miller because of the gay ass run from Bat from Justice League, the Flash looks amazing. It's so good. That it's fucking so good. preview with Ben Affleck on the whatever that side of that yeah. thing he's on, yeah. and then Michael Keaton, I'm Batman, yeah. and does the flying. The yo, the Flash looks amazing, man. Okay, again though, back to back to the Rock. <laughs> You don't think that the Shazam and the characters all behind Shazam and the, and the way Shazam is kind of a little bit more youthful, a little bit more fun, a little bit easier going. Yeah. That's the character, and, though. Yeah. And Shazam, you, that's the Shazam. Yeah. And Black Adam is not that No, guy. but you don't think that that confuses some people? I'm not talking How? about comic no. book people. I'm not talking about comic no, book people. No, I know people. you're not talking about comic book people. I'm thinking, um, look, so it's hard to, for me to separate what I already know. Once you know something, you already I know, know I, it. I get that. So it's hard for me to separate that. So I can't completely be impartial. But I'm thinking, I go into the movies thinking, what does this movie have to offer me? Like, I don't know shit about Guardians of the Galaxy. When I first watched Guardians of the Galaxy, I had never read a Guardians of the Galaxy comic. I had never read any. I had never read a Doctor uh, Strange comic book when I first saw Doctor Strange. So I'm going in there blind. So I could kind of speak to this language of like, just because I know some comic books doesn't mean I know everything. But I go into these movies and I just go, give, okay, give me what you got, right? Give me what you got. Look, like, just give me that, right? And I'm watching Black Adam and I'm like, this is great. Like, it's my wife. Perfect example. My wife doesn't know shit about comics. She's never read a comic book in her fucking life. She went to Black Adam and she literally says to me, I go, what did you think? She goes, I, she goes all I ask for in these movies is that they entertain me. And I had a good time. I watched Black Adam and I had a good time. It was fun. It was entertaining. It was visually uh, cool. It, was, it had its funny moments. It was interesting. It kept me, it kept me uh, uh, engaged. engaged. She, this is my wife talking who doesn't know anything about comic books. She, she was never like, why is Shazam more playful? She didn't give a fuck. She didn't care. She but like just you said, for those that know, that's the character. Yeah, but that, and for those who know, you know. And if you don't know, you just enjoy the fucking ride. But the, surra- the, the cool music and the electricity and the slow motion. The surrounding characters in in Black Adam yeah. didn't do it for me. The way that they set them up. I, I loved it, man. I, I did. Hawkman. Oh, my God. Hawkman. Eldest Hodges, Hawkman. Can fucking- we just talk about the fact that nobody gave up, nobody fucking gave props to Hawkman being casted as a black dude? Hello. Nobody said shit. 
the fuck? That role could have been a black guy, Pierce but Bronson it didn't have is, to be a Pierce black guy. Pierce Brosnan is Doctor Strange. I thought, I, now, listen, I'm looking at this movie going, come on, man. Doctor Strange is it's not Doctor, Doctor Fate. Doctor Fate. Oh, Doctor Fate is Doctor Strange. Right. Uh, Adam, Big Adam, whatever Adam yeah, yeah. is, Ant Man. Right. There's some similarities. But again, if from the now we're getting into the comic books, these are these are characters that weren't created for the movies. This wasn't like, oh well, Marvel did it in 2017, so let's have a let's write a character. These are characters just, that were in comic books for 50 years. There's a, there's just I, I'm gonna say this last thing. I think it's to credit though that you didn't notice. Eldred's Haas. Uh, ha- no, I, it's not that I didn't notice. It's, I don't no, like no. the fact that other people didn't. No, no. What I mean about this. it is, I, what I like about it is because it, 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 it's normal. Right. That's that's the that's no, no, the you're upside right. and, of it. And it wasn't like and I, this was two things. One thing, I, I appreciated the fact that they were like, look, Hawkman is black. Look at us, camera. <laughs> huh? Aren't you proud of us for being inclusive? Yeah. You didn't that, need that. That, that, wasn't that just necessary. shows you. Just give me a, Remember we all right. talked about that. You're like, you don't think if they made Robin black, you don't think they would have flipped out? And I go, no. That's, just don't make it a big deal. Just I think that's a little different. No, because it's not. Hawkman is not Correct. I know what, you're what saying. Robin is. But it doesn't matter. If you uh, just do it right, if you just if you just do it right, nobody gives a fuck, dog. The, the stupid people care. Like the stupid people who care about Little well, Mermaid. I care. Like the stupid people, but I'm not stupid. The stupid people that, that care about Little Mermaid being black, those are stupid people. You're stupid if you care about Little Mermaid being black. It's a fictitious fucking well, mermaid. Listen, fucking let, me, let me just say this. How and, dare this unicorn be a black stallion? Shut up, bitch. It's a fucking mermaid. It's a unicorn. It's a fictitious creature that doesn't exist. What are you talking about? Uh, let me, I, and I, again, I'm not the, I'm going to show up to the, what you call it, the, co- the comic book convention yeah. dressed as the characters. But as a, just straight on some man shit, again, it's action, it's superheroes, it's, when you was a kid jumping off the furniture Yo, with a towel around that your That Hawkman fucking hammer, though, was dope as fuck. Yes, it was. God damn it, man. But that being said, here's what I think is such a travesty. And I always said, kudos to Marvel for being the bully on the block. But if this, if we being honest, if this was done right, DC is supposed to be the 92 Dream Team. And the thing that robbed us that I hate is when they show at the end of Justice League, the Zack Snyder version, they walk into what would supposed to be the Hall of Justice. Yeah. And he goes, so many chairs. No, whatever many chairs, yeah. he said. I wanted for that moment to see Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Cyborg, Black Adam, yeah. Shazam, Green Lantern, the Hawk, all at that fucking table. Yeah. We were robbed, yeah, man. man. Aquaman. Like, if they did that right, that blows Avengers out of the fucking water. Yeah, yeah. But DC doesn't You know what happened? It was like right. the 2014 Olympics when they got bronze. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's what we got. That's what we That's got. We're getting. DC always has problems. Was this. it not a dick hard moment? By the way, hold on. I don't know if it was 2014 before you get fucking people who are like, uh, excuse me, sir. It was 2011. I don't know. But I don't know the year. You get the point. They got bronze. You got you and, get the and point. How, and, and when I saw the Zack Snyder version, it was such a dick hard moment when they introduced Martian Manhunter. Mm, mm. And I'm just like, man... Who, what, and, and people have been saying, yo, man, you got to be patient. James Gunn is the truth. Yeah. Not bringing Harry Cavill back, not doing a Black Adam 2. I don't trust it. So I don't here, trust so, James so here's uh, the thing. Gunn. So here, I trust James Gunn, but I will say this. Two things. One, I understand not doing the Black kids. Black Adam didn't make money, dog. And it's like business. It's a, bu- it. it's a business. You can't do that. But you Hollywood, can't lose money. I know, but Hollywood's lost money and taking gambles and has doubled down on failures before. Give an example of a sequel that the original didn't make money. Now you're talking about a sequel, bro. Like, it's one thing you take a gamble on an unknown entity like they did with Black Adam. Another thing is you did the gamble, you lost, and you double down and go for a sequel to a movie that didn't make, the original didn't make money? Like, that's hard, bro. That's hard. From a business Ah. perspective, as a fan, I'm with you. Again, I will I will die on the fucking hill that Black Adam was a fucking great, not good, great movie. Fuck you, dude. That movie was amazing. It was fun. But more origin if you're story. Te- but if you tell me, hey, we're not making part two because they fucking made exactly the amount of money that we spent. So, so we didn't so, make no profit. So, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. So so Man of Steel didn't turn a profit? It did turn a profit. So why are they not making part I, two? I feel you. I'm with you on this. However, how are you going to be brought in as the boss and you be like, yo, we want you to fucking do whatever you want, but you need, a, you need to have these actors. You know, well, that's not really... Like, it's, it, the Rock gave a perfect analogy. 
perfect analogy. He talked about this at the, at the red carpet of the Oscars. They asked him about Black Adam. He goes, look, I tried to do my best. I tried my hardest to do the best movie I can. I tried my hardest to bring back Henry Cavill because I know that's what, I, that's what we want. I wanted to center it around Shazam, around Black Adam and, and Superman and Henry Cavill. He's like, but they brought, in, they brought in James Gunn and what they did, that's the equivalent of owning a football team and bring in a new owner. And even though you got a star quarterback that's a proven winner and you got a star running back that's a proven winner, those aren't my guys. I'm the owner, I'm the new owner of the team and those are my guys. I didn't draft them. And there's some timing and issues. And that's real shit. There's some real, as an artist, Aries, as an artist, if you are the producer of a fucking TV show, they bring you in to be a producer of a show, but they, ha- but they tell you you have to bring in this actor. You're like, but that's not who I want. I'm just saying the politics works both ways. It does, dude. I get, but it's tricky with the but, bullshit. But if, they, those, if those are the rules, then let those be the rules. But we know this business plays games. But that's why I can't get mad at it because from a, as a fan, as much as I want Henry Cavill to be Superman, I understand James Gunn's point of view where it's like, wait, but I'm brought in to fucking, because whatever we're, they've been doing is, has not been working. It like, just hasn't. Okay, I just want to- We s- love it, but it doesn't make money and they're a business that needs to make money. Let the Jew talk about yeah. money and business. <laughs> no, no, I just want to say this because we, we, first of all, there's also some timing issues with getting all the actors that you want to be able to play these parts. But here's the other part. The reason I had a problem with Shazam, and I'm going to tell you what my reason is. And why Shazam I, or Black Adam? Uh, Black Adam. And why I like, and this is going to be real quick, and why I, I like what Marvel did. Marvel set up all the entities where you had origin stories because you're bringing people sure. into this that sure. don't have any idea what these Correct, characters yeah. are. And that's where DC kind of fucks up But that's up what sometimes. Black Adam did. Black Adam. But it, did you know Black Adam was supposed to be in the original Shazam movie? And it was The Rock who said, stop. Let's take our time Time, with time. Let's separate but the, these stories. But the extra care, the all the other characters, they didn't give them their their good a good origin well, story. You don't. First of all, there's plenty of characters in. Just to give an example, Doctor Strange, the first Doctor Strange. Yeah. There's like three characters where you don't. This guy's a wizard. Okay, and you just that's it. That's all he fucking is. Shut up, man. And you don't. That's it. And and you don't. They don't. You don't go into be like. But I need to know more. They just did a better job of setting it up, man. I, I'm I, sorry. I, I I disagree, man. I disagree. There was. There was enough to get you intrigued in the side characters that you wanted more, but there wasn't enough to be like, but they never said who that was. It's not like fucking Cyclone went in there, fucking made a tornado and left. No, she fucking went in there. How talking about unnecessary her was she? I, I thought she was, I thought it was cool, uh, man. You don't think it was cool? I just didn't see where she was necessary. Uh, see, here we go. But man. this is what it is. It's we all have you, our different opinions. That's nah, because she's, she's a woman. Notice but, he didn't say anything about the fucking big guy. I don't think he was necessary. But you're going to say that. Well, he's a man. Okay, exactly. <laughs> All right, man. That's our podcast, man. Listen, we're going to be, you're listening to this this week. We're going to be in uh, in the LOL Club in San Antonio, Texas. Not me, because Aries doesn't like me. Anymore. Yeah, no. Love well, you, we're going to get you back out, Love man. Love you, baby. Uh, then the following week, uh, I'm sorry, that was, uh, that's going to be there uh, uh, March 30th through April 2nd. Uh, April 6th through the 8th, we're going to be at Columbus Funny Bone. And I love that club. We're going to be off for a couple weeks, and then we're back at and Neri's favorite place, Arlington uh, Improv in Texas, the twenty seventh through the thirtieth. A couple of weeks. Yeah, we're off for a couple of weeks. Wait, 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 wait. When? Uh, you know what? I, you didn't. I don't know if you saw it. Just got Mike dropped San Diego, beginning of August, and uh, that's it, August, but we're right. in April. Oh shit, my fault. Okay, it's an A word though. It's, it's an close. A word. Okay. You did good, buddy. You did good. It's okay. Uh, thank you. Some of the months are hard. <laughs> thank Some you. Some of the months are hard to. Thank you. Can I have McDonald's and balloons now? Uh, Neri, you want to give you want to give some uh, some shout outs to your many 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 I know many I, I many have podcasts. podcasts yeah. I have so many podcasts. Movie Bros. I talked about Movie Bros. Podcast. Uh, if you go to geekbro.net, there are other Movie Bros. Podcast, the What's Up Bro Podcast. Some of these I haven't done an episode in a couple months, but because I've been on cruise ships and the wife has been really bad, so but. We're doing new episodes of Movie Bros this week, so be on the lookout. And for who that. was on it again? What's, what's your Movie Bros? This Cocaine Bear? It's oh, well, the next episode that we're actually recording tomorrow is going to be uh, Nope. Uh, nope with, was good. And Yes Man. So we get an old movie, we get a new movie and an old movie. Yeah. So we got Nope and Yes Man. Yes Man sounds like a movie about Eddie Murphy's entourage. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then we got, and then we got Cocaine Bear oh. and um, and Scarface, and then we're, and then the following episode is gonna be Creed three and Apollo thirteen. Okay, shit. I like that Creed and Apollo three. You you do you mix them well. You know, Good job. Man. I think we should call this episode Cocaine Creed. Cocaine Creed. Yeah, okay. we got it. All right. Or just say Miami Creed. 
That too. It could yeah. be Miami Creed. Yeah. yeah. All right. Appreciate you coming on. Man. Love you guys. Thank you for Thank having you, brother. me, brother. Yep. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. If you'd like to know who's responsible for this shit, it was hosted by Ari Spears and Andy Steinberg, produced by Steve Merrick and Anthony Holmes, executive producer, Big Papa, Robert Kelly, and Matt Klein-Schmidt for the Laugh Button podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.